Hi, Adam. Hello. Yeah, we're here at Rich Mix. Um, we've just watched Another Hood and heard you do a quite fantastic Q&A for the film. It's very funny. Um, I've just got a couple of questions for you about like the movie and yourself and everything like that. Um, you've come a long way since Kiddlehood in 2006. Like, you've gone from acting to co-directing or just directing, yeah. co-writing and co-starring in a f your own film. Um, how's that journey been for you? Quite a surreal journey, to be honest. Um, it it, it kind of happened without me thinking too much about it. Obviously, you know, we made Kiddlehood, went on to make Adulthood, and there was always this thought in the back of my mind, you know, one day we should have a movie in this country that was kind of just based around the comedy aspects of it. And I realised with Kiddlehood that with there, there was a lot of banter in the movie that we added ourselves and when I realised that worked and the audience really kind of related to that and they, they really took to that, that one day we should have a film in the UK that's just basically made around a comedy aspect and so it was, a, it was really about me kind of you know building up my CV until I get to a point where I'd have power so I can write the film, take it into a production company and say look would you guys think about funding it and and it kind of went from there. I've done, done a film called Shank um, with a company called Revolver. And I was kind of just talking about it at the time to producers. And they basically turned around and said, you know, put your money where your mouth is and write the film. And if we like it, we'll fund it. And that's, it kind of went from there. Yeah, I think they liked the idea and they wanted to see if it would actually, you know, if it wasn't just me being all talk and would I actually write the film. And so it was a case of me sitting in my flat for like two months last year, literally solid, like, every night, a lot of Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, just chilling with Michael Rue, just writing a film. And, and it took two months to write it, and it was a case of us giving it to them, and, and it went from there. But it, it felt like it was a step-by-step -step process. You know, kind of, first of all, you know, building, building me up as, a, as an actor, then going on to film, getting my name out there as a, a kind of urban actor, and then saying, that, okay, I've got my own one. So it seemed like, it was a step-by-step -step thing. Cool. So let's talk about music. Yeah. So you've been in quite a few music videos and you've had two of the songs featured on Kiddlehood, right? Yeah. And obviously your character, Kay, plays a wannabe MC. Yeah. Is this, you know, a s subtle hint that we're going to see you move into music and just leave the film behind? I'd never leave the film behind because that, that's, that's where my love is at. Do you know what I mean? I, my muff. My real love is with acting and, and now, I guess, writing and directing. And that's always where my heart's been at. But at the same time, um, I've always kind of dabbled with music as well. And, you know, from the, around the age of 15, I used to go on pirate radio and we had a show on Kiss 100 at the time as well. And it's, it's something that was always there. So the people that I grew up with, they were always doing music. And it's not something I've ever wanted to kind of suddenly lock off. I yeah. always want to keep it there. And it sounds mad, but... It's kind of therapeutic in a way. Like any actor that you talk to will tell you that this, this acting game is mental. Like it's mad. You never know when you're going to be working. You never know when your next job's going to come in. And it's so stressful that I find that actually, you know, putting it in lyrics, it helps. And so I don't necessarily make music for everyone to feel. I just make music for myself. And if people like it, then that's a great bonus. But I think, you know, it can come hand in hand. You know, you make a film, you can do a soundtrack and put it on there. But there's definitely going to be a lot more music. To come right. out soon. So we've got yeah. That to look yeah. To. yeah. Also, um, so in a lot of your movies, the characters you play have quite colourful language. Yeah. Um, whether that's how you normally speak, <laughs> well, we'll find out. Yeah. But uh, I want to know what your favourite word or phrase is in the British slang. British slang. Um, oh, there's many. I don't, I don't know if I've got a favourite one. Um, you know what it is? It's always changing. That's the problem, you see. Like, with the street language, you've got to really keep your ears to the street because it's always changing on a day-to-day -day basis. So, stuff that's in another hood now is going to be old in about a year, but I wanted to keep it very relevant to, to yeah. how it is at this present day. Um, things that, I, I guess, words that never get old is peng, that girl's peng. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, my size, that's my favourite one. That's my little kind of trademark out there. <laughs> So yeah, or in my size. Cool. So um, you said you're from Hackney. Yeah. And um, what was it like for you growing up in East London? Um, I think probably typical to many kind of teenagers growing up. Um, 
had trouble, had good days, had bad days. And But I do love East London. Like, I've got to say, I love East London. I think there's no place in London that's like East London because it's the real... Without kind of, you know, I, I love London, in it, But East London itself, I think that's the real London. That's why the Olympics come here because <laughs> it's the real London. It is because, you know, you've got... It's always been a, a very poor area of London, and we've always had to make do with what we can make do with. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so we—it it feels like you know, coming from East London, you're you're always maybe a bit of an underdog, and that's what it feels like sometimes. And but you're the real London. You're the, the real. Always the favorite. I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I like being the underdog as well. I feel like I'm a bit of an underdog in this game, and but I kind of like that because it's always a bit of a challenge and. I used to kind of be a bit bitter towards it. You know, how can I make all these films and I'm not getting accepted how I want to be in the mainstream? But actually, the more, I guess, mainstream put their hands up and say, you know, we don't really want to accept that culture, the more, actually, I want to kind of push them doors down, push them doors down and, and get my films out there. So, but yeah, I love East London and I think that um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a melting pot. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think I'll be able to have kind of written another hood if I never had the background that I came from. Because, you know, you, you walk around East London and there's, there's people from every background. You know, you've got middle class, you've got street kids, you've got artists, African guys, Chinese people. There's so many cultures and they're all in this one area. And it's the, the gritty side of London. So we don't have much here. So I think that's why we try to make the best of what we've got. And that's why I love East London, yeah. So do you still go out in the area and stuff? Yeah, you'll always see me around. Yeah, <laughs> Where's I, your favourite place to go out in East London then? Uh, I go to Hackney Empire. Um, I actually come to here quite a bit as well, Rich Mix. I do. Fantastic. It's It's that calm cinema that you can just relax <laughs> it, you know, take a girl and chill. <laughs> um, there's loads of places, man. There's loads. But I try and keep it. I've been working so much at the moment. I ain't been out in ages. Like, I've just been working. So I've been a bit of a homeboy recently. Like yeah, okay, I'll take you <laughs> off on that. Yeah. So, finally, just my last question, what have we got to look forward to in the future? Um, I've got a film coming out soon called, um, they changed the name actually, it's called, uh, what's the new name? Outside Bet, it's called now, and it's with Bob Hoskins that comes wow. out um, later on in the summer. Mm-hmm. It's kind of, it's quite different for me as well, it's set in, in East London, about the print workers in the 80s that lost their jobs, you know, when Rudolf Mur- yeah, Murdoch yeah. came in and... A lot of people lost their jobs, there were a lot of strikes, and, and I'm playing a kind of a factory worker, set in the 80s, so no street slang and mm-hmm. none of that, just kind of doing that. Okay. Um, got a few films I'm doing this year, and on top of that, just writing. I've been doing a lot of writing, and been writing a bit for TV, which I don't want to say too much about at the moment, but I want to kind of focus on comedy, I think, as well. I think the whole problem, I think, in Britain at the moment is that we went through a stage in the 80s where comedy was brilliant. We had really good comedies coming out of the UK, really good sitcoms, you know, Only Fools and Horses, The Real McCoy, all these comedies that I think people related to. And then I think we went through a stage where we became very PC and Mm. people were scared about what jokes they could tell and, you know, we don't want to offend this person, we don't want to offend that person. And that's what another was about. It was about actually forget about all this offending everyone. Let's just make a comedy that people will laugh at and people can relate to. And that's what I want to, I guess I want to try and bring to TV as well. So, there's a lot of plans, yeah. With there's you. a lot to do. Little time, but a lot to do. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Adam. For thank you. To the Rich Mix. Cheers. <laughs>